is a Win Stanley, why are Labour so obsessed with Israel? That's the $64,000 question, isn't it? Yeah, I think it is. I, I was listening to some of the discussion with the callers earlier in your programme, George, and uh, yeah, I mean, look, it's a big question. I mean, there, there's a long history of this, as um, you alluded to, um, and I I get into some of it in my book, uh, Weaponizing Anti-Semitism, which is about the, the Jeremy Corbyn period and how anti-Semitism was weaponized against that movement during Jeremy Corbyn's leadership of the Labour Party. But it's got actually a much longer history than that. You know, the, it, it can go right back to the um, conception of Zionism as really uh, a, a specific form of uh, a certain strand of evangelical Christianity, um, whereby, it, it, and, it's, and it's really a kind of, uh, an anti-Jewish uh, uh, theology, really, whereby uh, the Jews, quote unquote, have to uh, uh, supposedly return to Palestine um, before the end times can come. And this, you know, evangelical Christianity doesn't have the political clout in this country that it does in the United States, um, but uh, it used to. It used to, you know, uh, ministers and prime ministers used to believe in uh biblical literalism a certain form of biblical literalism and and uh and, and so on and so forth um and so it it kind of starts there there's a long history of it and there's a long history of um the labor party in its uh really more colonial phase in more it's more colonial era where it was um not only supporting british imperialism around the world but actually running uh governments which ran british empire around the world as you know george um, and so Labour, the Labour Party's support for Zionism is is part of that long kind of malign history. Um, but it's still, it's still, you know, that doesn't explain everything. You're right. You know, the, the discussion that you were having it, uh, earlier was interesting because you, 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 you raised the point of money and, you're, you know, you make a really good point about how the kinds of money that the Labour politicians are being basically bought for it's really it's nothing compared to the the poli the money in it American politics. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's 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 a really fair point. Like that, for example, uh, Keir Starmer. We know um, one of the people he was bought by was I mean, not the only one, but one of the people who was bought by was Trevor Chin, who's a leading pro-Israel lobbyist, is known to fund many pro-Israel lobby groups such as Labour Friends of Israel, and that money went to his office. Um, I believe, though, it was only about twenty thousand pounds. Um, which, you know, exactly. it's not a small amount of money, but in, in terms of political campaigning, it's 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 not really very much. And so there must be more to it. And there, there's a lot that I think we don't know about. And, uh, you know, it, 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 a lot of it is to do with moral blackmail, you know, that we've seen this kind of witch hunt and hysteria uh, really dredged up against uh, the, the whole Corbyn era, against you yourself, as you well know, George, um, and against anyone who's really campaigned for Palestinian rights um, in this country for many, many decades. And, uh, you know, the weaponization of anti-Semitism is really as old as the state of Israel itself. Um, and the irony that we're seeing now with <laughs> the shambles in Rochdale, the Labour Party shambles in Rochdale, um, is that this anti-Semitism witch hunt that was mainly being prosecuted against the left and the Palestine Solidarity Movement within the Labour Party and outside the Labour Party over the last few years, has now even expanded to the Labour Party right. <laughs> you know, this is the irony that they've- The Blairites. Uh, your, yeah, the Blairites. And your, uh, your, Labour, your former Labour uh, um, opponent, who's now been suspended in Rochdale, I mean, I didn't agree with what he said, but it wasn't anti-Semitic. You know, there was it was about it was about his. I mean, look, he, he I haven't heard the actual full tape of what he was alleged to have said, and I've you know it wouldn't surprise me if the the the, the Daily Mail um, misrepresented it somewhat. But you know, as it was reported, I, I didn't agree with it. But it's it's about a state. It's about the state of Israel. You know, it's not about exactly Jews. As, uh, and it's what it, it's actually what many Israeli newspapers have yeah. themselves said. 
uh, these newspapers yeah. like Haaretz and so on that are against Netanyahu, they've said similar yeah. things, and they are yeah, Israeli absolutely. newspaper. Uh, but the, yeah, the New York the, Times had this a is a novel. Well, yeah. yeah, the New York Times also did. Yeah, uh, which is basically an Israeli newspaper, but that's another matter. <laughs> the, the, this new turn uh, is uh, is interesting. Me, is it just the case that they built a Frankenstein monster uh, around the uh, weaponization of anti-Semitism, and it cannot now be stopped? Uh, why would someone like Graham Jones, uh, a man who refused to serve under Corbyn, who backed the cutting off of water and electricity in the Gaza, uh, who, according to Ed Balls, who should know uh, on uh, British television this morning, is definitely not anti-Israel. Uh, now he's suspended. Uh, I mean, where does this stop? Can it be stopped? Yeah, I, yeah, I mean, you're right. It, it's an interesting dynamic. I mean, look, I mean, we're both laughing a bit. I mean, I can't help a little bit of schadenfreude. I mean, I, I, I was saying years ago on Twitter that, like, that not only will this go against kind of the weak, the weak part of the pro uh, Corbyn left that kind of gave way to it, um, but it. Ultimately, it will end up going against the Labour Party right. And that's kind of what we're seeing played out now. And yeah, you're right. It's interesting. I mean, I think it is a, it is a kind of Frankenstein monster. It has a, it has a life of its own. Um, it's something that it seems like, um, you know, a, a few days, only a couple of days ago, they were saying, uh, for as her Ali, they would, um, the pro Israel groups were saying, well, you know, it's not it's bad what he said, but the alternative is is Galloway. So, <laughs> so we have to stand by it. But then it's it's got this life of its own, where by you know the the Labour Party uh, higher ups have made all these commitments to doing whatever the the Israel lobby says, um, the pro Israel uh, groups are be uh, are ordering them to do. And at this point, it is well you know. He said something anti-Semitic, as they claim, although it's not. Um, and so they have to get rid of him. And it, yeah, it seems to have this own internal logic. And it kind of speaks to this issue of what you were saying before, uh, of uh, Israel is the attack dog of Western imperialism in a lot of ways, but it's exactly that question, at what point does it become out of control and start to bite the hand that feeds a little bit? And I think we're seeing a little bit of that in the Labour Party um, at the moment, yeah. There, there, these secret recordings are, of course, uh, um, haunting other people. Uh, I, I can't give you details, but another of my opponents is about to fall victim to uh, something similar. Um, it, Okay, <laughs> and in a way, therefore, uh, we are uh, we're in a situation where other people, rather than the voters, are picking the MP. Uh, that's harmful mm. for democracy. This uh, obsession, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this very similar process to what we saw through all the Corbyn years, where something would be leaked to a newspaper, a right-wing newspaper, usually, not always. Um, quite often, the Jewish Chronicle, you know, the very pro-Israel uh, right-wing uh, newspaper, um, and uh, about somebody prominent who was perceived, who was or was either was or was perceived to, to, to be close to Corbyn or pro-Corbyn figure in the party. Um, that would then be uh, leaked to the press, leaked to the Jewish Chronicle, whoever got it. And then the Jewish Chronicle or whoever would then put that to um, the Labour Party. And the Labour Party, instead of saying, you know, well, um, we don't comment on individual cases, uh, uh, as they would do for other issues, um, perhaps, um, they uh, instantly suspend the people and say, well, you know, oh, this is very serious. And, uh, you know, there's going to be, there's a suspension pending further investigation. And it would just, it would have to be the very slightest form of criticism against Israel, um, or or even just, it got to the end by the, and this, you know, again, something I cover in a lot of detail in the book, but by the end, it got to the point where you, if you were just asking for evidence, like, where's the evidence of this so-called 
institutional anti-Semitism, this systemic discrimination against Jewish people within the Labour Party, if you were asking for evidence of that, that in itself was said to be evidence of anti-Semitism, which is a crazy, um, you know, Kafkaesque catch-22 situation. And it, it is really McCarthy, you know, it is dangerous. Like you said, it is really dangerous to democracy. It is, it, it, the people are not, like you said, the people are not choosing who's going to be the MPs, who's going to be the candidate for the MPs. There's these, um, you know, political and uh, media elites, essentially, that are, are choosing uh, who are going to be the candidates for MPs and who are going to be um, our political leaders. So, you know, it, it, it is a very, um, I hesitate to use the word, but it's, it's wicked, you know, it's a very wicked, uh, in the old fashioned sense of the word, it's, it's, it's a very, um, yeah. it's a very bad and evil process, really. Well, is I've been in politics a long time, as you know, uh, longer than you've been alive. I've been in, I was in Parliament <laughs> for almost thirty years. I recognise the era that you uh, described of uh, Labour's infatuation uh, with Zionism, with its evangelical mm. uh, uh, roots, and the uh, kind of Fabian uh, idea that Israel was going to be a progressive. A form of colonialism with exactly. kibbutzim yeah. and the Histadrut having its own bank uh, and uh, so on, the trade union having the, its own bank. I, I lived through that, although they always tolerated the presence of people mainly on the right of the Labour Party, like Andrew Folds and others, uh, who took a pro-Palestinian, or they, they, they would yeah. be then described as pro-Arab. Uh, th yeah. That was always tolerated on the Labour benches. Um, and, but Ed Miliband's era, himself Jewish, uh, a father who was an intellectual titan, uh, Ralph Miliband of uh, left-wing politics, he was Jewish but not Zionist, uh, mm. and even he was attacked. I remember the B-list actress, uh, mm. Maureen Lipman, uh, who mm. she resigned from the Labour Party over Ed yeah. Miliband agreeing that Labour wanted to recognise a Palestinian state. So um, it kind of predated Corbyn in that way. I'm just wondering Absolutely. if you had a, a notion or if in your book you chart when this infatuation became what I call it an obsession. Yeah, I do get into a lot of that in the book, and I do mention the the, the precedent of uh, Ed Miliband, and it, it, you know it's, it's a really interesting uh, history that you raised there, and I do get into some of it, um, and I, I chart the history of some of that. And the, the Maureen Lipman thing is funny because you know that she left uh, allegedly left the Labour Party for the first time during uh, the Ed Miliband era. Precisely because of his, as as you said, support for a Palestinian state, uh, and then that was said to be, you know, ooh, uh, there's you know an anti-Semitism problem it, for Ed Miliband, not not to the same extent that there was for Jeremy Corbyn, but it was there oh. definitely. Um, but Maureen Lipman then uh, several years, four years later, um, in the 2019 election, repeated the trick of abandoning the Labour Party um, because of uh, Jeremy Corbyn, what she claimed was anti-Semitism. Um, so it is, uh, it, yeah, it's it's a real uh, it's a real puzzle that the, you know the media has this sort of uh, uh, really uh, short-term memory. I think as well that uh, yeah, the, it's an interesting question of when when did it start? Like you can you can uh, trace it back to. Um, I, uh, one turning point was 1956, of course, which was the um, the the you know what the Palestinians and the Egyptians call the tripartite aggression against Egypt, where um, France, Britain, um, and Israel conspired to invade Egypt. Um, you know, in this uh, it was uh, it was uh, complicated, but that, essentially that that's what it boiled down to: it was a tripartite invasion. Um, of of e the Sinai Peninsula, the Gaza Strip, and so forth, um, by yeah no, the by Suez the Suez Israel. crisis. Yes, exactly the Suez crisis, as it's known in the West, um, and um, uh, ultimately that was um, 
you know, rolled back by the Americans, ironically, who weren't as fully on board with Israel as they are now. Um, and uh, that very slight difference, there was then a slight difference of opinion between um, Labour and the Conservatives over that, because the Conservatives obviously were <laughs> taking part in that invasion, as you know, um, but um, the, the Labour Party didn't agree, disagree with it. I, I mean, you know all this history, George, but it's interesting for your viewers, I'm sure, that um, the, the Labour Party opposed it, not on principle, but on the narrow ground, on certain narrow grounds of it being not in the best um, British uh, interest. Uh, you know, no, no time to get into the whole thing of it. Um, I get into it a little bit in the book. But then that set about the first um, break in within the Labour Party grassroots and in certain political activist sectors and the pro-Israel side. And that's when Labour Friends of Israel was actually founded, was after the um, uh, after the, the, the so-called Suez crisis. And so, um, you know, there's a history of these pro-Israel groups. And in a way, ironically, although they're, they're very strong, they're very influential, they're very powerful, they've got, they got a lot of money behind them. We don't know how much, you know, it's, this is another difference with America. There's like far less transparency with these groups like Labour Friends of Israel, Conservative Friends of Israel. We know they have a lot of money, but we don't know um, exactly how much. Um, they... Um, it, it, ironically in some ways the fact that they're needed is kind of a uh, a sign of weakness uh, certainly on the popular level because it shows that if it wasn't for all these kind of groups they wouldn't have the same level of of support that they do it sounds a fascinating book is how can people get it um, well, it's in all good bookshops. You can buy it online um, in, you know, all good uh, retailers. Um, but um, probably the best way is to get it straight from the publisher. Um, all books is orbooks.com. Um, and uh, yeah, you can buy it, buy it there. Fantastic. Look forward to it. Thank you very much, Asa Wynn Stanley, an expert on both Israel and the Labour Party and the nexus between the two.